Nicole, you're in uh, federal parliament for a long time. Have you ever seen a minister so incompetent and still keeping his job than Andrew Giles and the complete mess he's made of the visa system? First of all, we get all, all of these convicted criminals who are released back into the, into the public. Now we find out that there's Palestinian women with their children halfway to Australia and they get bundled off a plane and get told to go back to Egypt. How's this bloke still got a job? I really don't know, and Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has a lot of questions to answer. Uh, Labor seemed to have absolutely no control over the immigration and home affairs portfolios, and you've used the word incompetent. That is precisely what they are. How can you stuff up visa conditions for people who are actually on the plane? I mean, the Coalition was warning that these visa conditions need to be looked at very carefully uh, before the visas were issued. And then Labor decides, while well, these poor people are in the air, that they're going to retract their visas. It's just bizarre. And as you've mentioned, it comes on the back of the fact that Labor managed to release, what, 149 criminal detainees into the community because they hadn't preemptively planned for the High Court ruling that was handed down late last year. And then they've let them into the community and put them on the wrong visas. I mean, Andrew Giles has to go. I, I cannot believe that Anthony Albanese has not intervened. It is just embarrassing, but also it's putting Australians in danger and it is unacceptable and Albanese needs to act. Yeah, again, it's a lack of leadership. James, I mean, you go back one step, you just wonder how we were making decisions to grant these visas to these people in the first place. We've all got sympathy uh, for yeah. innocent people who are inside Gaza with children who want to get out and don't want to have their children live in schools where they're going to get bombed one day. So they, if they get that opportunity to get out, they'll grab it. But how can we possibly be confident that the checks and balances, the right checks and balances, have been done on any of these people? Yeah, it's a great question. And some of these visas have been granted within one hour of application. Um, I'm sorry, coppers are hardly able to do a police check on somebody within an hour, let alone an immigration check at the same time. And, Steve, I've got a real problem with using Australia as a safe haven when we have 122,000 homeless Australians in this country that can't get a, a roof over their head. How in God's name are we supposed to put a roof over these people's heads for the next 12 months? Now, they say they're a protection visa for 12 months, but we all know they never leave the country or very rarely leave the country because, at the end of the day, Labor, if they're still in power at that time, they'll just grant them permanent residency or citizenship. So this is not the right solution. If these people need safe havens, there's plenty of countries nearby that are safe and secure, and they're Muslim nations as well. Go to them. Australia's a long way away. We don't need you. We've got nowhere to house you. Sorry. Ta-da. The Teals and the Greens, uh, James and Nicole, always seem to want to lecture us about, you know, we, we've got to look after the environment and, you know, we shouldn't be wasting money. But you look at these expenses that what the taxpayers have forked out, $12.5 million in printing costs for politicians from July to December, a 1,000 of that coming from Adam Bant, 87,000 from yeah. uh, Teal, Kylie Tink, Allegra Spender, Sophie Scamps, they're all in there. I mean, James, how carefully inside One Nation do you watch this sort of stuff, this potential wastage? Steve, there needs to be a change to the way in which communication budgets are actually spent. Uh, lower House MPs are able to spend it on a, a broader range of things, including radio advertising, print, postage. Uh, th some of these things have got extraordinarily expensive. Uh, they can also spend it on social media. Can I just say, if there's one positive to come from this, it's the fact that they are spending them with Australian printers. Um, and, you know, there's, a, there's an enormous number of small printers. I came from a printing background myself as well. So when, they, when I do see figures like this, yes, of course, it's over the top. But I will say it's better they're spent with Australian printers. Uh, it's a shame we don't manufacture paper here anymore, apart from uncoated stuff. But uh, it is better to be spending it on those means of communication than it is to be spending it with offshore social media outlets. The, the money goes off offshore and overseas. Nicole, without you know, naming names, do some people end up getting elected to federal parliament and then think, you beauty, here I go, I've got a, an open chequebook here to do what I want? 
I, I don't think that that's the case, Steve. Well, I certainly hope that that's not the case. But I think in the in the example you've given of Adam Band and the Greens, who are always on about you know extreme environmental measures we should all be taking, why are they using any paper? Personally, when I was a federal MP, it's a really important way to communicate with your local community. And James has made an excellent point about the local printers that you manage to support uh, by doing so. But, you know, you've got to use a range. You still need to use a range of communications to, to connect with your local community because not everyone is on social media. So that's only one way to get in touch with people. Print is still a very powerful form of communication. James, Nicole, thank you very much. We'll talk to you again soon.